So now we come to one of the most amazing moments in the entire history of science. We've learnt this sort of field configuration, a wall of vertical electric fields and horizontal magnetic fields, can exist as long as it moves sideways at a speed v. If the following two conditions are met. So the first condition that comes from Faraday's law is that the electric field equals v times the magnetic field. And the second condition from the Ampere-Maxwell equation is that the magnetic field equals mu naught epsilon naught v times the electric field. So the question is, can we meet those two conditions simultaneously? Because if we can, we could get a self-sustaining pattern of electric and magnetic waves that will just move through space, each one constantly changing and reinforcing the other. So can we do it? Well, let's have a look. Let's rearrange the top equation to make B the subject, so that means just B is 1 over V times E. And now we can set these two equal, so we get 1 over V times the electric field equals mu naught epsilon naught V times the electric field. So the electric field cancels, and we can rearrange it so that we get V squared equals 1 over mu naught epsilon naught. So V equals 1 over the square root of mu naught epsilon naught. So yes, the equations are telling us that it is possible to meet both these requirements, this one and this one simultaneously, and thus have a self-propagating combination of electric and magnetic fields that can travel through space all by themselves with no needs for wires or charges as long as it goes at the speed. This is pretty amazing when Maxwell came up with it, and it was more amazing still when he plugged in the numbers. When you actually look up the numbers for mu naught and epsilon naught, which are both things you can measure experimentally from magnetic experiments or electric experiments, it comes out as 3 by 10 to the 8 meters per second an extremely familiar number, the speed of light. So this was truly amazing, I imagine, at the time. Before this, no one had any idea that light and electricity and magnetism had anything to do with each other. Light was studied by period optics, it was all about lenses and mirrors and things like that. Electricity and magnetism was about wires and batteries and uh, rubbing static electricity, bar magnets and compasses. And to find they're actually the same thing. That electric fields, when they change, produce magnetic fields. Magnetic fields, when they change, produce electric fields. You combine the two, you can get a self-sustaining pattern of electric and magnetic fields that can fly off into space all by itself. And that's what light is. So these self-sustaining fields all around us, we've been looking at them since our caveman days and never realized what they were. Pretty amazing moment. And we can deduce a couple of other handy things here. One is that we've got a relationship between the electric and the magnetic fields. So if you see light going past, um, we now know that V is the speed of light, so we know that the electric field is C times the magnetic field. So obviously C is a big number, the speed of light, so that means numerically the electric fields are much larger than the magnetic fields inside um, light waves coming past you. We can also work out the direction. We know that the electric field has to be upwards, magnetic field sideways. What, so if, we want to know, if we know the electric and magnetic fields, we know that the direction must be at right angles to both of them. And it's actually given by the right-hand rule. What it means is the direction... So the direction in which these waves go can be written down as the direction of E cross... B. If you use the right hand rule, you can see your thumb sticking out here, fingers curling over there. So as you go from the first thing, the E, to the second thing in the cross product, the B, you curl your fingers around and the thumb points out in the direction of the vector. So that gives us the direction in which things are going. 
pretty amazing stuff, and it was experimentally confirmed fairly soon afterwards by Heinrich Hertz, who managed to generate accelerating sparks and found that there was indeed coupled electromagnetic waves coming up from them at the speed of light. So these things, these electromagnetic waves, really did exist. Amazing stuff.